First turn, and we are live. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank those that are tuning in to watch uh, this morning's service. It's good to have you here. We're at Northside Christian Church in Pueblo. My name is Pastor Dave Stiles. And uh, to, this morning, I want to talk about who is Jesus to you as we celebrate Palm Sunday today. And there was an interesting study that was just recently done by Barna Institute, that does a lot of research, they've been around since 1984, that came, and this was just done with Americans, and they nine out of 10 Americans believe Jesus existed. Okay, so they believe Jesus actually walked on earth. Out of that, six out of 10 believe that he's actually God. So those that don't believe, believe he was maybe a teacher or a prophet or a spiritual leader or figure, but not necessarily God. Five out of ten believe he sinned. Now, to me, that's pretty astonishing. Because that would include even people who believe Jesus is God. Yet they believe that he sinned. And six out of ten say they've actually committed their life to Jesus. They've confessed their faith. They've confessed their sins, excuse me, and professed their faith. This was on that study, and I don't know how well you can see it, but each successive generation, we see fewer people believe in Jesus. As we look at the elders, and it's 71%. Baby boomers, 65%. Gen Xers are 59%. And millennials, 46%. But then you go down to ethnicity, and you look, white Americans, 60%. But black Americans, 80%. And Hispanic Americans, 61%, which I thought was also interesting. Now, something that didn't really surprise me with this is that people who make more money actually are less likely to be believers. People less than 50,000, 65% of them believe, where 50,000 to 100,000, 63%, and then people who make over 100,000 a year, only 53% actually believe. So most people believe they're going to go to heaven. Now, how could that be when we only have six out of ten people that have professed and confessed their faith? Because of their good works. How many times have you heard, well, that person's going to go to heaven because they're a good person? <laughs> it has nothing to do whether they believe or not. It has nothing to do whether they are saved or not. But because they are a good person, they're certainly going to go to heaven. And, you know, if we watch a lot of these Hollywood shows and movies, they perpetuate that myth. Well, I know my father's looking down on me in heaven because he was a good man. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning being a good person in and of itself does not get you into heaven. The only way to get into heaven is to be a believer, to confess your sins, profess your faith, and believe who Jesus is. So who is the Messiah? And we're going to look at Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10 this morning, which begins... As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethlehem and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied it, at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, 
What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. See, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Celebrating who Jesus is. joyful the people must have been as Jesus is riding this donkey through the streets of Jerusalem and they're laying down palm branches they're laying down their cloaks praising God for who he is <clears throat> today's Palm Sunday we celebrate this as the Sunday before the crucifixion, which took place five days later. For Jesus, this was his final trip into Jerusalem before he'd be killed, buried, and then risen again. So he went ahead. He sent his disciples to go get this colt that he could ride on, and they put their cloaks on it. And Jesus rode through the streets of Jerusalem on this donkey as people were singing Hosanna in the highest the Lord has come the Messiah is here he's the fulfillment of the prophecy that we see in Zechariah 9 9 which says rejoice greatly daughter Zion shout daughter Jerusalem see your king comes to you righteous and victorious lowly riding on a donkey on a colt the fowl of a donkey See, this prophecy is 500 years old. This prophecy was told 500 years before, Jude, before Jesus appeared on the donkey riding down the streets. The Jews knew this prophecy. They were familiar with it. And here they see Jesus fulfilling it in front of their eyes. They knew who Jesus was. They knew the claims that he had made. They had seen the miracles. And now he's riding the donkey, fulfilling the prophecy that was told over 500 years prior, claiming to be the Messiah, the anointed one, the deliverer for Israel. <clears throat> It reminds me, I should have showed, um, well, we didn't have in Kansas City, but I remember in Philadelphia when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And millions, and I'm sure they did in Kansas City too, millions of people lining the streets, praising their football team and how great their football team is. Maybe that gives us a glimpse of what it might have been like when Jesus was riding down the streets on a donkey. All the people that'd be out there cheering, all the people that'd be out there, you know, waving palm leaves, celebrating their deliverer had come. They laid their cloaks down, the palm branches, they waved them, chanting, praising God thinking that this is the kingdom like David. 
He's going to come. He's, he is now going to be our earthly king. But that isn't why Jesus came. Just five days, just five days later, we read in Mark chapter 15, verses 9 to 15. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. No one it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to Pilate, release Mark, Barabbas, instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them, and they said, crucify him. They shot him. And Pilate said, why? What crime has he committed? But they shot it all the louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. What happened? Sunday, Jesus is being paraded through the streets as their conqueror, as their king. And five days later, they're ready to kill him and crucify. Crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was not what they were looking for. Jesus was not what they wanted. They wanted somebody to come and deliver them from the Romans, from the oppression that they received from the Romans. Not to deliver them from their sins. Not for salvation purposes. But to get them out underneath the Romans. They were looking for Messiah to come to set them free from the oppression that they were experiencing. And what happened? The Pharisees got the Romans stirred up enough and Pilate stirred up enough to kill them. To kill them. Because after all, the real Messiah wouldn't certainly die, would he? And then to die on a cross? If we look back in the book of Deuteronomy 21-23, says to die on a cross was a curse. Now why would a Messiah allow them to kill him on a cross? They missed it. They missed it. They didn't understand. If you ever had expectations, they were dashed. Assumptions that you made that didn't come true. Well, they had certain expectations on what they were looking for in Messiah. And Jesus didn't fit their mold. He didn't fit into the box that they wanted to put him in. Let's bring this home. Does Jesus fit into your box? Uh -oh. Your expectations of what he should be doing for you. Some of us look to Jesus and we want him to solve all our problems. Get me out of this mess. Solve my problems. But that's not who Jesus is. Some want him to be our avenger. Mm. Maybe someone's wronged us. Maybe we don't think justice is being served. And we want bad things to come upon that person as a result. It's not fair. They should get away with it, right? We want the Messiah to come to fight our battles. Now, for those of us that are believers, we know justice will ultimately be served. We may not see it here on earth, and sometimes it just seems unfair. 
we have to believe. We serve a just God, and justice will prevail. Amen. How many look to Jesus to be their money machine? Uh-oh. And, you know, right now, there's people that are trying to figure out how they're going to pay their bills. May have been laid off from work. And asking Jesus for financial resources is not necessarily wrong, but looking for him to bail us out, to buy a new car, a new flat screen, that's not who Jesus is. To bless us with a new cell phone. But he is our provision. He is our provision. And right now, maybe there's more basic needs. Maybe you're just trying to figure out how you're going to pay your bills. In that case, seek the Lord. Put your hope and your trust in Him for His provision, but not for the luxury items, but for the things that we need to live. And He knows, because He says if He takes care of the sparrows, right, He's going to take care of us. But He's not our loan shark. He's not our ATM. Some want Jesus to be the person who looks the other way. Maybe you've given in to temptations. Well, I think all of us at one time or another have given in to some kind of temptation. But then we ask, well, is it really that big a deal? So I took some money from my employer. So I took some product from my employer. So I didn't really tell the truth to my friend. It's just a white lie. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to hurt them. What's the big deal? We don't want to be accountable. We don't want to be accountable. That's the big deal. Or the police officer pulls you over and you say, I wasn't speeding. Well, I clocked you 80 and a 55. We need to take accountability for our actions. We're, we're seeing more and more in our culture, a culture of people that want to blame someone else and not to take the responsibility. We need to take the responsibility for our own actions and stop blaming others for the things that we do. When he doesn't live up to our expectations, sometimes we're really disappointed. And sometimes that causes us to turn away from Jesus. Jesus is God incarnate. He came, he walked among us, not just us, and not just this world, but the entire universe depends on the world was transformed when he came. He didn't come just to solve our problems. He came to save us from our problems. What's our biggest problem? Rebellion. Wait a minute, Pastor. I'm not in rebellion. We want him to save us from the consequences of our sin. For those of, uh, for those of you that have raised children, think of it when your child's starting to ride a bicycle, for instance, and you're running alongside them and helping them. At some point, you have to let them do it on their own. And they may fall, but that's okay. Because they'll learn. We can't always be there for them. The consequences of our sin is we have to be willing to accept what those consequences are. Because there is consequences as a result of our sin. But because of Jesus coming, because of his death on the cross, 
He took all our sins with him so that we could be restored in relationship with God the Father. He made the way. Sin separated us from God. Sin still separates us from God. But if we're willing to confess our sin to Jesus and repent and turn away from our wicked ways, our relationship with God the Father is restored. In Isaiah 53 it talks about the servant giving his life as a ransom for many. Maybe Jesus doesn't fit into this nice box that you have. But we've all probably heard the saying we need to look outside the box. Maybe we got we need to change what our expectations of who Jesus is to be in our lives. He was innocent. Pilate knew it. But his hands were tied. He did not want to cause a revolt or rebellion among the people. He was there to keep the peace with the Jews. But he knew Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He didn't lead a revolt. I mean, Barabbas was a murderer. He led rebellion. Jesus didn't do any of that. Barabbas deserved to die. Jesus didn't. So is Jesus your Messiah? Is he the anointed one? Is he your Lord, ruler in your life? Have you given your life to him? Or are you holding back? Are you afraid that, well, I'll have to stop sinning? I give them a lot to Jesus. But you know what? You're deceived. We're deceived that we think sin is what makes us happy. There's no true fulfillment, no, no lasting satisfaction in sin. Only in accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior can He fill the void that exists within us. Can He bring us the peace and the joy? that we can't find in things, in items, in people. But we look for it everywhere. There's only one, where, one place where it can be found. And that is in Jesus. So I want to thank you for watching the message this morning. And just remember, Jesus is always there. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He's just waiting for you to come to him and to give your life over to him. If you like the message this morning, please click on like and share it with others as well or tag it. We're just so we're thankful that we are part of the family of God, the family that has turned their lives over to him, have surrendered our own selfishness, and becoming more like Christ each and every day. Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful for Jesus and for the message today. Today, let us remember that this is a day of celebration. And Jesus went through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey as people cheered, as people waved and celebrated his existence. And we just, Lord, we thank you that he went to the cross for us and saved us from our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Nothing I can do in and of myself will ever get me to heaven. But you have shown me the way in Jesus' name.